This lecture introduces the existence and uniqueness theorem in first order differential equation. Well, in this section, we'll consider whether a uh, given IVP, y prime equals to f of x and y, where f is a function in terms of x is the independent variable and y is a dependent variable with an initial value y of x zero equals to y zero. So we want to know whether this IVP has a solution passing through a given point, initial point, x zero, y zero. And if it does, whether there can be more than one solution that passing through this initial value. Well, these questions are the questions of existence and uniqueness, and they become very important when one is trying to solve at apply problems. Let's look, let's look at the theorem. If you're given a differential equation y prime equals to f or of x and y, then if the function f here is defined and continuous everywhere inside a rectangle R, defined by some values of x and some value of y, where x is in the interval from A to B and y is in the interval from C to D. And these rectangles here is populated in the x, y plane, right? That contains the point, the initial point, x0, y0 and all of its interior. So then if f define continuous on this rectangle, then there exists a solution y of x that passing through the initial point x0, y0. And this solution will be continuous on an interval from x0 minus a positive value to x0 plus a positive value epsilon. Furthermore, if the partial derivative of the function f in terms of y is continuous on the rectangle r, then there is exa exactly one solution and that solution is a unique solution. Of the differential equation y prime equal to f of x y and the initial value x zero y zero. There's a comment here even though sometimes the functions f here is sufficiently differentiable right, continuous, uh, define continuous everywhere. The theorem does not imply that the solution exists for all value of x. For example, if you have, uh, if you consider um, initial value that is close to a vertical asymptote, then the solution doesn't exist at this point. All right, let's illustrate this theorem. So given that I have an x, y plane. Okay, so this is x, this is y plane. And I have a functions again, the functions differential equation f, x, y. Okay. And then I have initial value x0 and y0 is initial value. So I want to plot my initial value here, x0 and y0. So now in order to figure whether this differential equation or this IVP has at least a solution or not, I need to find a rectangle where this function f of x here, f of x and y here is defined and continuous. So I found a rectangle, let's say, from this point to this point here, right? Creating a rectangle that contains some value of x and y. Okay. And this rectangle here, I need this rectangle is to include my initial value. Okay. So if f of x, y is defined and continuous, everywhere on this rectangle R, then the differential equation has at least one solution. This answers the existence uh, of the solutions question. Okay, I have at least one solutions. 
Well, let's draw like just a solution curve that's passed through this point, for example. Well, once we figure the existence of the solution, we want to know whether this solution is unique or not by looking at the partial derivative of f, function f in terms of y. Okay, so if the partial derivative of f in terms of y is continuous everywhere on r right r is the rectangle that we just created then then the solutions through the initial value x0 y0 is unique So this is how you summarize. We will summarize this, this theorem, the existence and uniqueness theorem here. Cons again, we want to pay attention to the function f here, and we want to pay attention to the partial derivative of f in terms of y. And again, y is the, in the dependent variable, and x is the independent variable. Well, let's look at the first example here. We want to consider or we want to know whether this IVP have a, has a unique solution. Well, first let, and again, we want to um, consider this form f of x, or in this case, it should be t, ty, right? And then x0, y0. So I want to convert this equation into this form. So I will have y prime equals to cosine of t minus y over t. Okay. Let's, let's do some observations uh, on this functions here. Okay. So this functions here is f of t and y. Okay. And then this function here, the f of t and y is continuous everywhere but at t equals to zero okay so that's the first observation there then we know that if we consider um here is the initial value x0, y0, right? If we consider a rectangle that contains this initial value, but excludes the point or the line t equals to zero, then we can come up with a specific rectangle that contains the initial value where the function f here is defined and continuous everywhere in that rectangle. So the, the rectangle that I'm considering is should be this rectangle here. Okay, so go from here to here, down here, here, here. Alrighty, so this is the rectangle R that I'm considering, right? It should be somewhere from 0 0.5 to 2 and from 1 to 4. All right, and I'm, I know that this function here, the f of t, is continuous everywhere on this rectangle. f of t y is continuous on r. So that means implies that the differential equation. has at least one solutions. So there's a solution exists, right? And the next question is, is this solution unique? The solution of uh, to this differential equation that goes through the point one, two here, is it unique? And then we have to um, consider the partial derivative 
of f in terms of y, right? And here's a function f and t in y, yeah. So when you find the partial derivative of the functions of multiple variables in terms of a specific variable, you want to treat all those variables as constants. So that means uh, treating t as a constant. So when t is a constant, I will move one over t out, right? And I want to find the derivative of cosine of t minus y here. When t is a constant, well, when t is constant, cosine of t is also a constant, so it should be zero. And the derivative uh, of the function f in terms of y of y should be negative one. So the answer for this is negative one over t, okay? So this is the partial derivative of the function f in terms of y is negative one over t. And does negative one over t function, is it continuous on r? And yes. Sin negative um, one over t is continuous on the rectangular r, then the solutions is unique. Again, r is a rectangle that we're just forming, right? Yeah, and because this function here is its own discontinuous when t equals zero, and this rectangle here does not contain um, zero as a value of t, that means this partial derivative of f in terms of y is continuous on r, which satisfy the conditions. That means the solution to this differential equation go, that goes through this initial value one, two is unique. All right, let's look at the next example here. So in this next example here, we want to consider this IVP, okay? And this differential equation is already in the form of, you know, x prime equals to f of, in this case, t and x, where t is the uh, independent variable and x is the dependent variable. And the function f of tx here is actually just a square root of x. All right. So we're wondering whether, um, so, and then the initial value is right here at zero, zero. In this case, the function f of tx here equals to square root of x is only defined and continuous on the interval from zero to positive infinity. That is one of the observation that we have, right? What does that mean? That means that we cannot, so in order to create a, a rectangle that includes this initial value zero, zero here, we have to at least starting from the left of this point and ending from the right of this point, so on and so forth. But in this case, if we're starting somewhere on the left of zero, the function f of t of x here, the square root of x is not even defined. So the first condition for the existence of a solution is violated already. So we cannot, cannot come up with a rectangle that includes this um, initial point where the function square root x is defined and continuous. So it cannot come up with a uh, rectangle R So we have no idea, we don't have any information whether or not this differential equation or this IVP would have a solution, okay?
not you don't have enough information to conclude the existence of uh, solutions. Okay. Well, but then we can try to solve this IVP. Well, this IVP here is actually a separable equation. So x prime equal to square root of x. And then you can um, move x prime over square root of x, right, equals to one. And then you um, integrate both sides. So then they will give you and x is x to the negative one half dx here equals to dt. So then uh, this is gonna be x to the um, one half. equals to t plus c. Okay. Equals to two x to one half divided by one half. So it's mean two x x to one half equals to t plus c. And then if you plug zero and zero into x and t, you will have c equals to, and the initial value is zero, zero. Then you have, um, well, this is gonna be just zero, zero, c equals to zero. So then your solution is x to one half equals to t over two. That means x equals to t squared over four is one of the solutions, okay? Well, we just found a solution using separable equation. However, as we know that we can find um, an equilibrium solutions. An equilibrium solution is a solution when x prime equals to zero, that means is a solution when square root of x equals to zero, which is x equals to zero. So we found another solution to this differential equations. That means this solutions, this 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 IVP here has two solutions. So it has at least one solution, but the solution is not unique. Well, this video shows you what is the existence and theorem, uh, existence and uniqueness theorem in first order differential equation. Also I'll show you a couple of examples of how we can analyze each IVP in order to know whether an IVP has a solution or not, or whether the solutions is unique.